How to add an audio data input to an Amstrad CPC 464. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to put an audio input into the cassette amplification circuitry of the Amstrad CPC 464, something that only has a cassette player and doesn't have any way of loading from PC. Okay, first off, we'll turn it over and remove the screws which are located. Blah. We're not going to remove the screws because that's incredibly boring. I've taken them out already. So turn it back over and let's lift the top of the shell off. Now remember, do this with caution because there's things that will like to rip themselves out if you're not careful. Okay, so two things to take out here. Ignore that because uh, you won't have that yet. First off is the keyboard connector. Gently wiggle that off. And secondly is the connector for the cassette side of the machine. Okay, so with that safely taken off, you can move the base of the machine to one side. One quick thing to note is if you've got any flickering graphics or anything like that, it's probably this socket has a dry solder connection. And uh, check my channel for a video on how to repair that. Let's move that to one side now and get to the nub of the uh, issue which is the underside of the cassette deck where the audio circuitry is. Now you probably noticed that I've already done the mod. Uh, that's because I wasn't sure if it was going to work and I didn't want to waste anybody's time with a non-working mod. So what do we actually have here? Well, let's uh, have a look closer. What we've got here is a jack socket which um, is connected with these two wires on the board. If we take a look at this, you'll probably notice that it's a stereo jack socket, but I've clipped the legs off and wired it up as a mono socket for now. Um, I've got a better one coming that I'll be able to mount in the case unobtrusively just there, but till then, this is my uh, my test, um, which will probably be enough for you to work out how to do your own mod. And that's got an, an earth and an audio in signal, which are both there. You see I've heat shrink those and two leads down there which I've also heat shrinked um, after they've been soldered to the board because I'm not too keen on tape. Now the first black one actually goes to this second point down on what turns out to be the reverse side of this connector here and actually does connect up with the black cable here and this is earth, okay? So that's earth there. Now the second connector actually comes down onto this chip here okay the audio uh, processing chip and it connects off of leg 7 except I don't go off of leg 7 because I don't want to apply any heat unnecessarily to that chip so let's have a closer look at leg 7 on this chip now if you see here this is all one track. Um, ignore the printing over the top. That's actually one track. It comes from leg seven and it goes all the way down to where the board's marked R310. So we've just soldered there and we are on that side of the resistor. Okay. So what that gives us is an earth and a input for our socket. Now the socket is wired up as you would imagine with the earth pin coming from the black lead up there. Let's just have a quick look at that actually. There's an earth pin going to the earth pin in the socket and the signal pin there. So all we do now is we'll connect a mono to mono cable from the sound card of the PC into this socket, set the volume to around 75% and we should be able to load things up. So all that's left to be done is connect that cable up and I'll quickly show you a piece of software called Tapir. I think that's how you say it anyway. It's version 1, which uh, should come with a warning label, I guess. And what it represents here is a Spectrum program for loading TZX files. However, the dirty little secret is that TZX files and CDT files, which are their Amstrad equivalent, are actually the same. So we'll open up um, the Open dialog, and you see it's only showing us Spectrum variants of tape cassette files. So we'll cancel that. I've actually got some .cdt files in this window here. If I drag one down into either the left or the right tape deck, you'll see that they will actually um, appear there. 
Um, when they're red, what that's saying is that the checksum doesn't work out, but there seems to be quite a lot of those in the Amstrad files, so I'm guessing that's something unique to um, Amstrad's. So, um, you can check the tape info and see how long it is. This doesn't accelerate the tape at all. This just plays it as you would expect, which is great when you consider all of the software for free out there. Okay, so um, those are the files. Um, you can get some more info about them by clicking on them. I tend to ignore the checksumming because these files all load fine. Um, if, for example, the loading routine stops for a while, you can insert pauses by going and inserting a block. Okay, so um, all that needs to be done is you go down and hit play. You can also play to WAV if you want to save the file as a WAV file. And then what will happen is it will play and hopefully load into your CPC 464. Dead, dead simple. Um, do bear in mind that um, when you're playing your files, they need to be around 75% and turn any bass or effects off. If you pop into the open dialog and you want to do it that way, you can put star.cdt and then you can go in and browse those and they'll open that way through the interface but it really doesn't matter you can drag and drop them to your heart's content okay well that's enough from me um, good luck with loading your Amstrad CPC 464 files into your newly created audio input and I'm off to play a few Amstrad games so until next time this is Mark from Mark Fixes Stuff signing off and I hope to see you all again in the next exciting episode bye